ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் திஸ் செஷன் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அண்ட் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு பில்ட் சிஎன்என் மாடல் ஆல் தீஸ் டைம் இன் திஸ் என்டையர் பிளே லிஸ்ட் வி ஹேட் பீன் லேர்னிங் த தியரட்டிக்கல் ஃபண்டமெண்டல்ஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் த மேத்தமெட்டிக்கல் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ட்ஸ் பிஹைண்ட் சிஎன்என் நவ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு இம்ப்ளிமெண்ட் இட் அ ரியல் டைம் விச் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி வெரி ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல் அண்ட் ஹேண்டி ஃபார் யூ டு ட்ரை இன் யுவர் சிஸ்டம் ப்ளீஸ் ஃபாலோ மீ கேர்ஃபுல்லி அண்ட் மேக் அ நோட் ஆஃப் த ஸ்டெப்ஸ் அண்ட் இஃப் யூ ஹவ் எனி குவரிஸ் ப்ளீஸ் கோயிட் அண்ட் டைப் இட் இன் த காமெண்ட் செக்ஷன் i can help you in figuring it out have all the prerequisites done properly you must have had all the keras modules installed properly and you can do it through pip install keras or conda install keras in the conda prompt you may get the error nb kuda dll missing please download it in the corresponding uh, web link that i have presented you in front of you and keep it in c drive windows system 32 where all the dlls are available you may not get this error if you have coda dll files already available and nvidia graphics card is in place and you need to use tensorflow properly and install it with pip install tensorflow along with pip install protobuf we are going to use tensorflow as the base platform over which we are going to construct our cnn model with keras we are going to go step by step and it's very interesting as well as very intuitive to try immediately i learned it so recently so it is very interesting you go through the same sequence you will also find it very nice first step we need to download all the required packages i am going to show you that right now the second step we can use keras in two ways the first way is to go with tensorflow as the backend and the second one is go with tano as a backend either case is okay i am going to prefer tensorflow and there is no problem even if you take the second one because the code is going to remain the same can we start the coding yes it's important and it's easy to before that we need to understand where and how the data set is to be kept i have downloaded the data set for cat and dogs i mean i am going to develop a model which is going to classify my input image as cat or dog so i have to have the collection of cat and dog images and i kept test set and training set just like what i do for my machine learning videos and 70% goes to the uh, training 30% comes to the testing and this can be tuned here and there that's fine now i have also get cat or dog 1 cat or dog 2 where in the first image i have got a dog and in the second image i have got a cat now this is what is going to be sent into my model once i develop the model and my model should be capable of identifying this as cat or dog appropriately i am going to show you the way i have structured it in my system so that you can understand it easily you can see that i have got the test set training set two images which are going to be used for the later stage with my system which is being developed in the training set i have got around 40 images and this is the cat directory i am going to go back where i'll have dogs directory where i have got another 40 images clearly stored now what is the next step i need to go with the testing where in the test data set you can see that about 24 images are there and similarly for dogs it will be another 24 it was 40 plus in the uh, training data set it is half of it in the testing data set that's the ratio i have taken now we can go ahead to the next step which starts with the coding we need to code first and the coding should start with setting up the fundamentals already for your coding we are going to develop a model for cnn which requires keras and i am going to use keras extensively you can see that from this slide i am going to first import sequential from keras models what is it it's very simple the network the neural network that we are going to develop is a sequential network and otherwise it can be graph what we are preferring is sequential and that's what is presented in front of you i have imported sequential now from keras.layers i import convolution 2d why we are going to work with images images are all 2d and when we go with videos it can be 3d in that case i'll go with conv 3d the next step is to download max pooling 2d from keras.layers we are going to do the pooling and down sampling where the pooling is achieved using the max pooling method that i have taught you in my previous lectures it can be sum pooling or average pooling as well the next step is to flatten the results that we have gotten in the previous stage the flattening is very important step as we need to convert the previously available results into a single continuous linear vector what is the next step the next step is to import dense this is nothing but full connection 
of neural network is performed with this lens and you will understand this clearly when we go to the uh, rest of the code where this is elaborated further. Now I am going to do some pre-processing at a later stage where my images from the testing and training data set is taken. For that I need image data generator from Keras preprocessing.image. So all these are the preliminary setup that I need and I have used that. I am showing you that as a video also right now so that you can quickly recollect how it looks like. You can see that I have used Jupyter again. I have used the same setup that I have used for my machine learning modules so it shouldn't be a problem for you. You can see that convolution, max pooling, flatten, dense and image data generator are all taken and that's what is shown in this quick video. Now the second section of the entire coding is the most important part of the model. We are going to fix with convolution, we are going to go with pooling, flattening and then finally full connection. The first step is very simple where I am going to initialize CNN. Classifier is equal to sequential. I told you we can go with sequential or graphical. I am going to go with sequential neural networks. Now the next step is to go ahead and to define convolution. So 2D convolution is what I am going to choose and let me choose a pointer so that it can be easy. So classifier dot add convolution 2D and there are four arguments to it 32, 3 comma 3, input shape and activation. What is 32? 32 is nothing but the number of filters. What is 3 cross 3? Shape of filter. What is input shape? 64 and 64 is the resolution of the input image where 3 represents type of image. I mean is it an RGB or black and white? RGB is represented with 3. And what is the activation function? I told you about it in my previous lecture. Sigmoid can be used, ReLU can be used. Here I am using ReLU. So the first step convolution 2D is set up. After convolving we will go with max pooling to downsize and downsample. So how do we do it? Classifier dot add max pooling 2D is the name of the method and here I need to specify pool size. 2 cross 2 is the size of the pool that we have chosen. Now what is the next step? The next step is to flatten. Why do we need to flatten it? We need to convert it to one dimensional single long vector. So we do flatten it. That's all. Three very important steps are over. If you want to go with multiple round of convolutions, you can follow the same step once again. So that will be the second convolution layer. I have not done that. I have not had multiple hidden layers here. It is only one convolution followed by one max pooling and one flattening. If you want more, you can do that. Now what is the next step? The next step is going to go with dense where we are going to create fully connected layer. We have got multiple nodes available. Remember this layer, we have, I, I will explain you this clearly. We have got multiple nodes available after flattening and all these nodes shall be serving as input to the fully connected layers. And this layer is present exactly between the input and the output layer and hence this can be called hidden layer. The number of units specify the number of nodes that are to be present in the hidden layer and we have got 128 units here. Activation again has to be done for that we use real. Now what is the final stage? I explained you this in my CNN architecture where the final stage is output and it is going to say if it is a cat or a dog. So we have only one unit there and activation can be sigma. I explained this again. Classifier is sequential. I initialize the process. I built a convolution model. I then went with max pooling. I then flattened it. I then built the fully connected layer and finally I went to the output. That's it. Now we have constructed all these. We need to compile this, right? The CNN has to be compiled. How do we do it? Very simple. Classifier.compile. I need to give three very important parameters. The first one is optimizer. The second one is loss. The third one is metrics. Optimizer is Adam. Loss is binary underscore cross entropy. Metrics is always accuracy. I will talk about these two a little later in a later session which will be very useful for you. For now, you just remember that we need to specify optimizer, loss and metrics. Now, what is the next step? We need to understand how to fit the images with CNN. Right. We have constructed the CNN. We have compiled it. Now we need to talk about fitting the images and to find the results. How do we do it? This is the most important part again. This is the second half of the uh, coding, I would say. Right. Now, what do we do here? Any image when we take and send it into a system, we cannot send it right away. We need to do pre-processing. This is what is being done here in this entire page where we do flipping, rotating, blurring and all these kind of pre-processing is done here. You can see that here, training uh, data gen equal to image data generator. I am rescaling shear range set, zoom range set. I am flipping. All these are nothing but 
predominantly the pre-processing which will enable the system to acquire this and then to work on it further. Now let me take the training data set. The target size is set as 64 into 64. Binary class mode is set and this is the training set. Similarly, I do the same for test set. Now the most important part comes in the entire coding which is nothing but epoch. You can see that steps per epoch is set as 80. Epochs is set as 10. What is epoch? Epoch is a simple component. Epoch is once all the images are processed one time individually both forward and backward in a network. Now what is it? I got 10 images. When I say epoch as one, all these 10 images are processed once forward backward in the neural network. If I say epoch as two, I will say if epoch as two, I can say that the 10 images are processed twice completely in the entire layer. So epochs can be determined based on trial and error. I cannot fix that epoch is 8000, 9000, 10000 and all because it will take a lot of time and if your system is a low-end system, it may even crash. So setting it up as 8, 9, 10 for our kind of programming is enough and if you have a GPU which is going to work fine, which can withstand all the pressure, you can even increase the number of epochs. But remember, keeping a large number of epochs may give you better accuracy but it may cause a problem of overfitting. So we have to be cautious. Now what is the next step? Steps per epoch. What is the steps per epoch? Very simple. It holds the number of training images. That's all. I had somewhere close to 80. So I have put it as 80. Now, what is the next step? I need to send input images into the model that I have developed and I need to see if my model is predicting what is there in the input. So I will go back to the first page where I have taken cat or dog or one, cat or dog or two. In the cat or dog or one, I have a dog. In the cat or dog or two, I have a cat. So I need to find this out properly and I need to see if my system is working fine. Can we go ahead with that? Now for that, I use NumPy and I use Keras preprocessing and I imported the image. Now I have loaded my first image. I resized it properly and I am pushing it into the classifier and I get the result. If the result is one, prediction is dog, else it is cat. This is for the first image. Similarly, I do it for the second image. Now, if the result is one, it is dog, else it is cat. Can we see what is the result? This is how the epochs will run. I got 10 epochs in my code. I can show you that once again for your easier understanding. Here epochs are 10, you can see that. First epoch, accuracy is limited, 74. Second epoch, 95. Third, 99. Fourth, 99. Fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. So it is 100% accuracy from here. So you can see that it is settling down and you can stop it here. You can have seven epochs for the model that I have taken, not more than that. That is sufficient. Now, what is the result? The first image is a dog. Second image is a cat. That's what I have shown you just before some time. So my model is predicting it right. I'll show you the way the output is coming so that you can realize how exactly it looks like when you try it in your machine because I did not have this kind of resource when I tried it out. So it will be really helpful for you, I believe. Now you can see that this is the way the output is uptime. You can see that Epoch 1 is running right now. It gives you 74% accuracy. Similarly, Epoch 2 is running right now. It will keep running until the 10th Epoch, which means 10 times all the images are being processed from the front, from the back and the neural network completely. So one cycle is called one Epoch. I can see that the third epoch is going on right now. Similarly, when I come to say about ninth epoch, you can see that the accuracy is settling down. So even in the seventh, eighth, I can say that it has settled down. It is close to one. So that is sufficient for me to say that my model is stable. So you can see that the output will be arriving right now in this slide. I will show you that here that we got the output. You can see that the output is dog and cat respectively. And that's what I had in my uh, directory where the first image is a dog and the second image is a cat. That's all. We have developed the model. It's very simple as well as easier to deploy and to develop. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type it in the comment section. I'll be able to answer you. Thank you very much.